Hello guys, in this video, we're going to talk about responsiveness and how you can apply media queries to the CSS. All right, let's start. Okay guys, this is part of a series of videos that I have on my channel. In the first video, I create this wireframe, then a second one, this mockup, then we create the HTML code, and then we add the CSS. And this is what we have so far. This is the whole page. And the idea of this video, I'm gonna add media queries to play with the responsiveness. The idea if you increase the width of the page, okay, all these elements, for example, if you see the menu is going to be horizontal. If you see these images, the same thing. I'm gonna adapt this text and these two images. That is the idea. I'm gonna put down below all the links to the other videos. All right, but let's start with this one. There are many ways to apply responsiveness. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can work with Flexbox. The idea is to convert a flexible layout. All right, let me show you. Here, if you see, we have the menu bar, okay? The menu bar is inside the nav element, okay? And inside we have the UL, the LI, and then the A, okay? I can see all these text, all this CSS is applied to the A. For example, here we have the text decoration. If you remember the text decoration, if I remove this, what's gonna happen? Then you will see the underline. I'm gonna go back and then we have here the color, background, display block. If I remove this, okay, what's gonna happen? You don't see the block. No, it's not covering the 100% of the width. Okay, and then you can see the text align center and a few margins and padding. Then if you see the um, nav UL LI hover here, what's gonna happen every time that I put my mouse over any of this, okay, the color of the background color will change. In addition, I'm gonna add another thing. For example, I'm gonna put the semicolon and then I'm gonna put, for example, color, okay? And then I will like the color white. I can apply just the pound or the hashtag and then FFF, okay, and that will be white. Okay, and then what's gonna happen if I put the mouse, you can see the background color is changing at the color of the text as well, okay? Okay, and then I have the list style type none and the padding left zero. If I remove this one, okay, what's gonna happen, you will have the bullets, okay, and this padding on the left, okay? And that is the idea of these two elements. But what I can do now, I will like, for example, I will like this. If I shrink this, page, okay, everything is okay, but if I stretch, let's say more than 500 pixels, I would like to put all the menu elements horizontally. That is my idea. In that case, we have to work with something that we call media queries, okay? And, and the idea always we add the media queries at the end of the CSS. I'm gonna do a few enters just to show you here, it's more clear for you. And first, every media query start with the at, okay? And then here you type media, you can type just M and you can see media is there, you can type enter. And then always type a parenthesis and then type a open and close curly bracket, okay? That is the idea, this is how you can start with the media query, okay? And inside you can type all the CSS, for example, all the CSS that I have here, I can include inside the media query, but remember, do not delete this curly bracket or curly brace, okay, on the beginning of the end. That is pretty important, okay. All right, the media queries, one of the things that you can do, you can apply the media to different elements. For example, I can apply the media just for screen, okay? I can type here screen, and that will apply the media query just for screen. Or for example, I can apply just for print, okay? One typical case is, for example, let's say your website is the background is black and then you have the text white. And then if you want to print, you want to do the opposite. And here you can use that on the media queries. But in this case, let's add just the screen. And then I have to add another condition. In that case, I have to put here end, okay? Probably that is very common. You will see this CSS on different websites. Okay, and that's why I'm writing that part. And here we're gonna type a condition. And the condition is a, I would like a minimum width the, for example, 
500 pixels. Okay. And as soon as I type that, I'm going to save it. Okay. And then I'm going to click here on this part on Dreamweaver. And you can see the 500 pixels is there. You can see it's a little purple. Okay. What's going to happen every time you stretch it there, something going to happen. But what I have to do, I have to start typing here. Let's say if I put, for example, just something for the body. Okay. I'm going to open and close curly bracket. And then I'm going to put here, let's say, a background color. Okay, I'm going to put a background color and then put red. Okay, I can see you can see the red background. And watch this. If I shrink, okay, it's a normal background, but if I stretch, now it's red. You see, this condition will apply just if you have a minimum width of 500 pixels. I need at least a minimum width of 500 pixels in order to apply, okay, the CSS. That is the idea, a minimum width. Is there all right but that is not the, what I need what I would like to work with is with the nav ul li a and the ul li and the ul that is the idea okay look at this the first step I'm gonna put here the side of the page okay more than 500 pixels because I'm gonna take a look of what I can do first if you see every element that I have here is inside a ul okay and then inside the UL, I have the LI, and then I have the A. Flexbox is something pretty powerful that the only thing that I have to do is this. The UL, the unordered list, is the parent of everything, okay? But you know, I have to be a little more specific. In that case, I'm gonna type nav space UL, and what's gonna happen, this will affect the UL that is inside the nav. Okay, and then I'm gonna open and close curly brace or curly bracket. Okay, and here I'm gonna put, let's say display, and then just flex. Okay, and if you see now what's gonna happen, all the elements are here in one line. You see, it's that simple. And then I'm gonna display all the elements that I have there inside, for example, the nav, UL and now I'm gonna affect the LI which is the element that is inside the UL open and close curly brace and then enter and I'm gonna type here just flex and I'm gonna put one just that okay what's gonna happen every single LI gonna use one part of this whole block you can see is divide in just one 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 is the same same width for every single one okay but this is pretty cool and then in addition for example look at this i'm gonna put let's say a margin i would like to put margin and i'm gonna put let's say for example 5px okay and look at that it's very nice it's applying automatically the margin that i need okay i don't have to do anything else and everything works pretty nice if i shrink you can see everything's there and then when you stretch it's like that pretty cool though all right let's continue then i'm gonna take a look what i have here okay on the lowest part if you see i have all the ul the li okay inside the nav and then I have my main section, and inside I have the first section, okay? The first section start here, okay? And then I have here div class image one, div class image one, div class image one. You can see I have three of these images. If I go to my design here in Photoshop, and if you see, I have all these rectangles that is like the rubber of every single div, okay? What I have to do, I have to create, okay, the condition flex for the parent of these three rectangle or these three divs, okay? Always is the parent, okay? The, the rule is to this parent, I'm gonna add the option that el element that you have inside the parent, okay, I'm gonna have flex, okay? All right, how we can do that? If you see the parent of every image one is the feature images. In that case, I have to go here, all right? I'm gonna apply a new rule. Remember, before the media query finish, okay? I'm gonna apply a new rule, I'm gonna enter, okay? I'm gonna put period, okay? I'm gonna type FE and immediately you can see feature images. Open and close, enter. 
and then I'm gonna apply here display flex okay and if you see it's side by side everything on one looks pretty nice and then semicolon okay and then if you remember the only thing that you can do here I'm gonna go to the image one which is the wrapper okay of this image and the text okay I'm gonna go back here period I am you can see immediately you can see the image one open and close enter I'm gonna apply here flex one okay and every single one I'm gonna have the same space between okay and then you can play around since this is a little smaller because the height is not the same like this one but it's the idea to show you what you can do you can see and it's working properly and you don't have any problem with the elements that you have inside all right let's continue what we can do here on this text because i would like to put the text on the, uh, the picture on the left and the text on the right let's take a look to the html all right the last one it was the feature images i'm gonna go down here and i have the article okay this is the first article okay you can see here the image and then you can see the h2 and the p and the only problem that i have is this you see i have the div okay this div is just for the image the h2 and the p and i have three elements and if i apply flex okay and that will divide these three elements in that case what i'm planning to do i'm going to create a wrapper a div that will be the container of the h2 and the p and then I can separate on the left and right. It's one way to do it, okay? In that case, what I have to do here, I'll type just div and then tab, okay? And this div, the last part of the div, just select, cut it. I'm gonna right click and you can cut. And then I'm gonna put at the end, right click and then paste, all right? And then here to this div, I'm gonna add, for example, a class just in case I want to control. And I'm gonna put here, for example, article hyphen text okay and look at this what i have here first i have the div okay this is the container of just the image and then i have another div that is a container of the h2 and the p okay actually i'm gonna do one enter here then it's going to be easier for you to understand that is this the container okay i'm gonna put more order and then i'm gonna highlight all this text and I'm going to do one tab and then you can see all the text a2 and p is inside this article text okay let's go to the css I'm going to go back here and the first element that I have to put in the css and inside these two curly brace okay or curly bracket I'm going to hit enter and then here I'm going to put period art and you see I have here the article one home Okay, I'm gonna click there, open and close query bracket, and return. Okay, the article one home, if I go to the HTML, you can see is the wrapper of the element that I have here inside, these two divs. If I go here inside, what I had to put to the article one home is simple, just display flex. And look at what happened, if you see on the left, on the right. but in addition, what I had to do, I had to put all the elements inside the two divs. One is the period article one home image, open and close, return, and I had to put flex one. And then do the same for the other one, period article text, open and close, enter, flex, one which is the same and you say is using half of the page on the left and on the right you see that is pretty simple if you want to add more space for example for the image okay what i can put here highlight this one and put for example two and this is going to using two part of this entire width of this div okay but i'm gonna put just one here that is the idea now what i would like to do i would like to remove this padding that i have here in that case, if I go up, I can see on this part, the 
article one home, I have this padding. The margin is for the separation that I have for the next circle, which is this div beneath. In that case, the only thing that I have to do is put padding zero. Let's go down. Here on the article one home, I'm gonna put my mouse here, the cursor, press enter, PA, padding, and then just type zero. That will remove the padding. And then if you want to change the height, if I go here, I can put the H for height, and the same thing that's gonna happen. If I put 500 PX, okay, what's gonna happen? That will reduce the size of the image. The only thing I can do instead to work with PX, for example, I can put 50 VH, okay? That will be the 50% of the entire view that I have here. If you see the lowest part is 50% and the top part is 50%. Or you can use pixels if you want. Okay, everything okay. And now if you see the entire page is responsive. If I start shrinking this, you can see how the site adapts. You can see all the images and that is pretty cool. The lowest part I'm gonna give to you, try to finish this part, but I'm gonna put the link to this document if you want to copy the code. Okay, I'm gonna finish this part. Okay, but the idea you try to do yourself. Okay, on the following video, I'm gonna show you for the phone, how you can create a hamburger menu. All right. Okay, guys, I hope you like this video. See you on the next one. Bye.